this video, I will go over these three expressions, which combine fractions and mixed numbers. Now, I will make the assumption that you know how to find common denominators, and you know how to work with mixed numbers, improper fractions, and if you want to, you can watch the videos that I've created on all of those topics. So let's start with the first example. So in this example, I have, so first off, so I have a division right here. And so that division means that I will work with the numerator first. So let's do that. So I have 3 over 4 minus 1 over 10. So I need a common denominator in between these two. So a common denominator is 20. And again, if you want to know how to find common denominators, you can watch the video on fractions. So now once I have this, so 4 goes into 20 five times, so that's my multiplier, that becomes 15, and 10 goes into 20, two times, so that is my multiplier here, and that gives me an answer of 13 over 20. Now I cannot reduce this fraction any further. So that is my numerator. Now my denominator, on the other hand, I don't have much to do. I have just a mixed number that is negative there. So I will change it to an improper fraction. So I will have so negative. Okay, so 2 times 3, which is 6 plus the 1. So that becomes 7 over 2. So overall, what I have is I have 13 over 20 divided by, so divided by, a negative 7 over 2. So the first thing that I check is, okay, is my answer going to be positive or negative here? Now, because of this negative, I know that my answer will be negative. And now in terms of division, so I have 13 over 20. Division always changes to multiplication. And we take the reciprocal and that is now I can check can I reduce anything I indeed can 2 goes into 20 10 times okay, and 2 into 2 goes once so that has reduced that I cannot reduce anything further so now I can just multiply and that's 13 times 1 and then 10 times 7 which is 70. And don't forget, the answer is negative. So that is the first example that we have. Let's take a look at the second example. This one is a little bit longer. Let's copy it down. So in this expression, Okay, I, as it's a little bit longer than the previous one, I notice that what I have is I have an addition. And I have an addition between two computations here. So these are terms that I have here. And just like in any order of operations, so I will first solve these terms before trying to do any addition in between them. So let's look at the first term that we have there. So I have negative 14 over 15 multiplied by 6 over 7. So let's see what this equals. So I notice I have a negative, so I know that my answer will be negative. Now next, I don't have any mixed numbers here, I don't have any divisions, so I can try to reduce so now reducing, I notice that, so I have 14 and 7. So I can reduce by 7. So 7 into 7 goes once. 
7 goes into 14 two times. So that reduces that. I also notice that I have the 6 and the 15. And that can be reduced by 3. So the prime number 3. So 3 goes into 6 two times. And 3 goes into 15 five times. So now what I have is... 2 over 5 multiplied by 2 over 1, which I can't really reduce any further. So this will be 4 over 5, and of course, it's negative. That's the first term. So that is this term right here that I have just completed. So I know the answer to that. So let me write this out. So I have... Now, negative 4 over 5 plus, so that is my plus there. And now I'm going to work with the second term, so which is this, this term right here. So let's do that at the bottom. So I have 4, 1 over 3, divided by 2. So there are no negatives, so I know that my answer is positive. Now, next, what I like to do is always take a look and see if I have any whole numbers or mixed numbers, which I will change back into improper. So changing this one back, so 3 times 4 plus 1 is 13 over 3. And 2, this one's a little bit easier, it's 2 over 1. So now the division, so this becomes 13 over 3. So this changes to multiplication. And then it is 1 over 2. So can I reduce? Unfortunately, I cannot. 13 is prime. And 3 is prime, 2 is prime. And they do not go into each other. So I have 13 over 6. So what I have now is the following. So I have negative 4 over 5 plus 13 over 6. So let me take this because we're going to have to do this addition. Okay, so I'm going to copy it. Let me paste it down here and then we can work with that. Okay, so the first thing is, so I have negative 4 over 5, okay, so plus, and now 13 over 6, and I will try to find a common denominator in between this, these two. So a common denominator is 30, And now let's find the multipliers. So 5 goes into 30 six times. I'm going to multiply this by 6. So that's going to be negative 24. And next, I have 6 goes into 30 five times. That's my multiplier there. And that will turn this to 65. And you can check that for yourself if you like. So I have negative 24 plus 65. So this is what I have. Okay, well, what is that? So let's take a look. So 5 minus 4 is 1, and 6 minus 2 is 4. Okay, so notice that because what we have is we have negative 24 plus 65. So it's like you are in debt and you're putting $65 into your account. Okay, and then that's what this would turn out to be. So your overall answer now is 41 all over 30, which equals, so as a mixed number, so 30 goes into 41 once, and you have 11 over 30 left over. And now you are complete the whole expression. So it's a lot of work. 
but it's a great example because it shows you what you would have to do in this example. Let's take a look at the last one, which is even longer. So let's copy this down. Let's paste it in. And let's see what we have. So first, as intimidating as this is, I will try to find all the additions and subtractions so that I can separate my terms. So here is uh, addition and then a subtraction. And that just simply will mean that I will work with, this is my first term that I have here. This will be my second one and then my third one. So let's get to it. So the first one. So I have a negative 1, 4 over 5, divided by 1 half. OK. First, I know that my answer will be negative. So that's number 1. Second, let me now change this mixed number back. So 5 times 1 plus 4, so that's 9 over 5. Division changes to a multiplication by the reciprocal. So this is what I have. And therefore, this will equal to 18 over 5. And it's negative. OK? So that is your first term. That's this one. OK, so I'm going to label it for myself. So this is number 1. OK, just so that I keep it in mind. Now let's take a look at number two. So for number two, I have five, one over three, times two over eight. This is what I have. So the answer is obviously positive, because both are positive. Now let me change. So this I will change to improper. Three times five plus the one and then multiplied by, I actually noticed that, so 2 over 8 is really 1 over 4. So now what does this equal? So I can actually reduce, notice that 4 goes into 16 4 times, and it goes into 4 once. So this is actually 4 times 1 over 3 times 1 and it's positive. So this right here is my second term. So I've done that one. Now let's take a look at the last term that we have. So let's write it down. This is 3 divided by 1 over 3 multiplied by negative 2 over 6. Okay, what does this equal? So number one, I always check if my answer will be positive or negative by counting the negatives. I actually only have one negative here, so I know that my answer is going to be negative. Next step, number two, is I always take a look and try to see if I have any mixed numbers or whole numbers. So let's convert them back. And we do. So we have three over one here. And now division changes to a multiplication by its reciprocal. So it's 3 over 1 multiplied by 2 over 6. So we have that. Now, can I reduce? I can reduce. So notice that what happens here, so I have 3 goes into 6 two times. And now, actually, I see that I have a 2 and a 2, so that's 1. So this now becomes very simple. Well, this is 1 over 1, 3 over 1, and 1 over 1, which is just equal to 3 over 1. And don't forget, it's negative. So that is now my third term okay, that I have. So let's collect these three terms together and see what we have left. 
So we have term number one, which is minus 18 over 5. Term number two, which is 4 over 3. And term number three, okay, which is negative, so 3 over 1. So if I go back here, so let's take a look. So notice, so we have an addition, okay? So that's an addition, so that won't change. But now here in front of the third term, I have a subtraction. So here I have a subtraction, and I hope that you remember, so a negative and a negative is positive. So this becomes 18 over 5 plus 4 over 3 plus 3 over 1. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, of course, what does this equal? And now we have to find a common denominator between these. So finding a common denominator, in this case, would be 15. So let me change all of this to 15. So I'm going to go kind of from the back. Well, 1 goes into 15, 15 times. So that's my multiplier for there. So that's 45. 3 goes into 15 5 times. So that's my multiplier there. And 5 goes into 15 3 times. That's my multiplier there. So 18 times 3, in case you wanted to make sure for yourself. And that will be 54. All right. We have all common denominators. And now we can go ahead and finish this question. So let's start from left to right. So negative 54 plus 20. So that will be negative 34. Now plus 45. So we have to actually subtract these. So it's actually positive. So my answer is 11 over 15. So the denominator stays the same. So I can't reduce this. And that completes this question. So you have seen now three examples which are tough. And it really will challenge you if you understand fractions or not. I highly recommend that you try it on your own. And I hope that these examples give you a sense of how to approach expressions. Thank you for watching.